One of the main reasons I bought my DJI Spark is I wanted to capture amazing video from our adventures. You know, those, those kind of shots that you just can't get from a GoPro or your smartphone. So I took my Spark out and, and some other equipment for our first mountain bike ride of the season and I made a video. And I'm gonna put a link right up here so you guys can check it out. And I'll also put that link in the description. But anyhow, today I wanna talk about the equipment I used and how I got the drone shots for the video. So yeah, let's just get right to it. My adventure kit consists of the least amount of gear necessary to get the results I want. Everything has to fit in this hydration pack or on my person because I don't want a lot of gear getting in the way of enjoying a good day in the mountains. So let's talk about what goes into this pack and the equipment I use to shoot the video. Of course, I had my DJI Spark plus my remote. I've got this great little plastic gimbal cover, so that keeps the camera and the gimbal safe when I shove it into my bag. I had five batteries for my Spark. The way I look at it, one battery equals one shot, so more batteries, more shots. I had two GoPro Hero 5s. Jen had one, I had one. Each one of those GoPros was mounted to a Freevision Vilta G gimbal. Jen's Vilta gimbal was mounted to the GoPro Chesty chest mount and my gimbal was mounted to a Peak Design capture clip with the point of view kit. Of course, I brought some extra GoPro batteries and I brought two anchor batteries with USB cables and those were plugged into the Freevision Viltas so I could keep those Viltas running all day long. And of course, I had my iPhone 8 with me and that's great for capturing some slow-mo and other video. The Spark doesn't get a lot of airtime out of one battery. Realistically, you have 10 to 12 minutes of flight time to get the shot. The way I look at it, it's one battery equals one shot. To make each battery count, it is critical to plan ahead. I was very familiar with the route, so I knew each location where I wanted to shoot and I knew exactly what I wanted to capture at those locations. Now, if I had been unfamiliar with the route, I would have checked online maps or even ridden the trail in advance to look for the interesting features. Water, river, bridges, anything that's going to be visually appealing. Planning ahead and knowing where and what you want to shoot before launching your Spark is going to allow you to get the most out of each battery. I've talked about this before, but it's worth repeating. Your Spark is an amazing flying video camera. And what I mean by that is you can pretty much position this flying video camera anywhere you want. So don't limit yourself by just taking those typical drone shots. Now don't get me wrong, overhead drone shots are great, but every shot shouldn't be an overhead one. Mix it up. Now I took two overhead shots for my video. One of them was this cool wooden pathway through a heavily treed area and the other was this uphill section that had this really interesting double switchback. The rest of the drone shots were varied. I had this kind of neat coming and going shot where I positioned the spark just above the trail and we rode our bikes into the shot and then I spun the drone around 180 degrees to catch us moving away from the camera. For another shot, I brought the spark down really low and I backed it into the trees to catch us going around a corner. And my final shot, I, I did more of a wide angle shot, so I backed away from the scene and I got down to a low angle perpendicular to the trail to see us going by through this nice stand of trees. Anyhow, the point here is the options are really endless, so get creative and don't just settle for the typical drone shot. There are many ways you can grab action shots with your drone. There's manual flying, hovering in place, or using active track. Now, I needed both hands for biking and I wanted to be in the shot too, so manual flying just wasn't an option. Active track is great in wide open spaces, but where we were shooting, it was just, it was just too heavily treed and I didn't use it. All the drone shots in the video were done with the spark hovering in place. And I think, especially for mountain biking, I, I think those static locked off shots are a really nice contrast to the fast motion, first person perspective of the GoPro. And it also gives, you know, this illusion like somebody else is running the camera. And that's probably gonna get some people wondering, geez, how did you get that shot? Getting each of the five drone shots was pretty much the same process. I get to the location, I unpack, I plan my shots, I launch, I move the spark into position, I set my manual exposure, set my return to home, and then I start recording video. 
And then one last time before I put the remote down, I make sure that I'm actually recording video and I make sure that the camera settings look good. With flight time ticking down, Jen and I quickly jump on our bikes and we pedal through the shot. And then I'll either pedal back or run back to where I left the remote and I'll bring the spark in for a landing. Now there's a few things to think about before taking off to get in the shot. First off, you wanna make sure that your return to home is set appropriately. I was leaving my smartphone and my remote at the launch site, so I needed to make sure that my return to home was set to my location. I also needed to make sure that the return to home altitude was set correctly. I don't want my spark you know, dropping to a lower altitude and crashing into trees should a low battery trigger a return to home. It's also important to have a good sense of where the shot will start and where it will end. You don't want to start or stop the action in the middle of a shot. You wanna make sure that that action carries all the way through the shot. So I gave myself a really good buffer on either end just to be sure. And finally, double check the camera settings and make sure you're actually recording video before jumping into the shot. The last thing you wanna do is get home and find out you missed a bunch of shots because you weren't recording. One extra check can avoid a lot of misery. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope that gave you some good ideas on how you can use your Spark to capture some awesome video of your next adventure. And if you found this video useful, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, we'll see you next time.